Hey, it's Rick. Welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm going to outline the benefits of 3D printed mold cases. Maybe you've got an FDM printer, maybe you're on the fence about buying one, and just need the tiniest nudge. Traditionally, people build mold cases out of melamine, plywood, MDF, acrylic sheet, foam core, cardboard, or anything else they've got lying around. The problem with that is, if you have an irregularly shaped object, you're potentially wasting a lot of silicone, and that stuff is expensive. I pay, with shipping and tax, about 300 bucks Canadian for a gallon of tin-cured silicone. Another issue is the thickness of the mold. It can be easier to demold if the walls are a consistent thickness. The silicone will be the same stiffness all the way around, giving it the same amount of flexibility all over. Because I sculpt my mold masters digitally, it makes it very easy to design a simple mold case that wastes less silicone and provides a consistent wall thickness. You can see what I've done with this cupcake model. The mold case is designed to conform to its shape. Now, when you print these, you don't want to print in vase mode. That's where it prints one continuous spiral all the way up, resulting in a model with only one wall thickness. This will give you a very flexible and easily breakable mold case. There may be some instances where this is what you need, but I find it doesn't work for me. The best way is to print them with a wall thickness of around one and a half to two millimeters. Adding a brim to the bottom ensures that it won't come off the build plate during printing. The biggest benefit of making them this thickness is their stiffness. It means that the mold case will apply even pressure to the silicone all the way around when you put on the elastics. So this is my process. Once the mold case is printed, I remove the brim. Then I spray the whole thing with some clear acrylic sealer just to make sure that it's watertight. Silicone has the nasty habit of finding any small openings and FDM prints aren't as perfect as the internet may have led you to believe. I attach the mold master to a sheet of 1 8 inch thick masonite using sticky wax. Using sprue wax, which I get from eBay and a wax pen, I seal the bottom of the print against the masonite. Then I fill it with silicone of my choice, in this case it's Smooth-On's Mold Max 30, and wait for it to cure. Once I've removed it from the masonite, I cut the mold case in half vertically with a Dremel cutoff tool. This is a metal one, not the brittle kind that tend to shatter and shoot little bits everywhere. I clean up the cut with an X-Acto knife, and then I remove the mold and cut it open to remove the part. When I want to cast a new part, I use this split print, the benefits being that it's an exact fit, of course, because the mold came out of it. But if you accidentally break it, you can just print another identical copy. Also, the kerf, or the thickness of the cut, means that when you apply elastics to it to press it closed, it holds the mold very snug, making sure there's even pressure all the way around. Unlike when you just use elastics on the silicone mold itself, and you have to adjust the pressure yourself in all different locations. Normally, mold makers try to make round molds exactly for this reason, so that the pressure is the same all the way around. But with 3D printed mold cases, you can make square and odd shape molds, and the case keeps everything together correctly. 3D printed mold cases won't work for every situation, but so far they work pretty well for me for most of the molds I make. But give them a try for yourself and post your results in the comments below. All right, that's it for this one. Hopefully this helps somebody out or gives you some ideas. Don't forget to hit all the buttons on your way out and thanks for watching.